Dangerously cold temperatures continue across the inland northwest, and we're tracking some snow. Your forecast is next. And as we round out 2021 with below freezing temperatures, how you can stay safe and warm this week. Well, I want the laws to change. This ain't over for us. Using the power of TikTok, millions of people now know the story of a Newport teen who was murdered last fall. Now, one of the suspects in his murder is walking free. Plus, COVID is at the top of many minds as we return from the holiday season. And as we hunker down for the cold weather, Washington health officials are afraid Omicron may already be joining you. Well, cold may be an understatement tonight. The Arctic weather is locked over the inland northwest. Nowhere in Washington and Idaho is above freezing right now. Wow, and it's hard to believe, but it's actually going to get even mm -hmm. colder. And while not a lot of snow fell this morning, the next wave we know is on its way. So good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News at 5. I'm Whitney Ward. And I'm Tom Sherry. Sorry about the weather. Mark <laughs> is off this evening. So our top story is just that, the bitter cold mm. temperatures that are already here and it may seem extremely cold out. It is extremely cold out right now, but it is going to get even colder. So Tom, what do we need to know as we go out tonight and heading into tomorrow? Well, it is dangerously cold. You know, we're trying to really emphasize that this is the kind of weather you can die in if you're out yeah. too long. And certainly it's very dangerous for animals that are mm -hmm. going to be outside, meaning your domestic animals. We're at eight degrees right now. Thankfully, we don't have howling winds. Wind is out of the north at five miles per hour. So really the only place the wind is blowing up into the teens is where we're seeing the coldest wind chill temperatures, and that's up in OMAC. Right now we have a wind chill of negative eight there. When we look at the radar, we've got a Really, most of the snow that is falling is down uh, south of Walla Walla around Pendleton, Oregon, along I-84. That's going to make that pass down there uh, in the Blue Mountains tough to get through. And any snow that's on the ground right now is not going to melt. Daytime highs are well below freezing, and the overnight lows drop down into the low single digits. And we might even go sub-zero temperatures by early Friday morning. I'll check the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up in just about 15 minutes. Thank you, Tom. And we want to make sure that you are prepared for this bitter cold all week long. So if you'd like an hour by hour forecast as well as Tom's latest forecast for the week, just text the word weather to 509-448-2000. Mm. And with those freezing temperatures, we want to make sure that you and your family can stay safe out there. So starting with your home, plumbers are already starting to get flooded with calls <laughs> about pipes bursting. If the basement is finished, uh, you don't know what's going on until the damage is done. Bad, it, it ruins the sheetrock, the framing, the flooring, um, grandma's piano. Anything that's down in that area is going to be ruined. So to help prevent your pipes from freezing, you may want to open up sink cabinets to let heat from the house circulate into those cabinets and consider leaving a trickle of water running from the highest faucet in the house. Secondly, the city of Spokane right now has opened a warming shelter at the convention center. There are more than 100 spots for people who just need a place to sleep and stay out of the cold overnight. Pets are also going to be allowed at that location, along with providing food and blankets. They will be providing winter essentials to people as well. The city is also accepting donations for the center, and those can be dropped off at the Cannon Street Shelter. Well, lastly, we mentioned about your pets. You need to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. If it's too cold for you, then it's too cold for them. Along with making sure they're inside as much <laughs> as possible, make sure they have a coat when they go outside. Yeah, that extra layer of protection will help keep them warm. Also, keep an eye out on their paws. That's because the cold and the damp weather can dry them out. For more tips on how to keep your pets safe, just head on over to creme.com. And if you are out enjoying the snow with your kids or your pets, we would love to see your photos or your videos. We've certainly been seeing a lot of scenes like this playing out around the area. This is actually from our own Mark Hanrahan, his kids sliding down the <laughs> there hill there go. in Manitou Park. It's been very good sledding weather lately. Um, you can just text your pictures or video to that number right there on your screen, 509-448-2000. <laughs> you can also use the Near Me section of our CREM2 app, and we might just put those uh, pictures or videos right here on CREM2 News. That's Camilla and Lucas right yes, there. Yes, having a grand old time. Yeah.
All right, something else that we have been following a lot and had our eyes closely on this one. This week has just been a roller coaster of emotion for Cougs fans because the original opponent for the Sun Bowl, yeah. of course, had to pull out because of COVID just hours basically after the Cougs had landed in mm -hmm. El Paso. Things, though, looking like the Sun Bowl were actually going to be canceled, but now a new team has been found to fill in. So Brenna Green right here, our sports director, as you can see, she's joining us on set as WSU football team now has officially turned the page in El Paso and they're preparing to play Central Michigan. <laughs> yeah, we are just three days away from this contest, so a bit of a quick turnaround. Oh, yeah, yeah, speaking of turnarounds, <laughs> WSU quarterback Jaden Delora actually just joined the team in El Paso after his flight from Hawaii to Seattle was delayed, which caused him to not get to Pullman on time for the team's charter plane. He was at practice today for the first time after all of that craziness. Dickert said it was good to have him out there just because the energy feels different when Jaden is there. Like I said, only three days to prep for Central Michigan, which is uh, very short, but Coach Dickert has found a different way to frame it. When we talked to the guys uh, when we got the game, we said, hey, everybody wants to be a professional. This is like a Sunday to, to Thursday game, you know, so we had really three days to prepare. We, you know, stay on our rules and principles and just make sure our guys can go around and play fast. We'll get one last update from WSU's practice tomorrow. They will close it to the media on Thursday. We will hear from Jake Dickert that day, though, at the head coach's press conference. Krem 2 is the place to be for the latest on the Cougs and the Sumble. Join us on Friday at 8 a.m. as myself and Travis Green will be in El Paso. We will have an hour-long pregame special leading into CBS's coverage of the game beginning at 9 a.m. You can only catch the Cougs in the Sumble right here on Creme 2. Meanwhile, in sporting events actually happening <laughs> today, the Gonzaga men were in action against North Alabama oh. this afternoon. And uh, yeah, this was the route you thought it would be. The Bulldogs won 93 uh, to 61. Actually, I might have not updated that score. Whatever. It was a it was, was a it was it was a big win. All right, five Zags caught in double figures. Chet Holmgren wasn't far behind from making it six as he had nine points. Julian Strother led all Zags with 15 points. So the scoring was pretty spread out earlier today. San Diego's men's basketball team announced that they are on a COVID pause, which means the Zags won't play them on Thursday. Generally, the college basketball world has been wrecked due to COVID the past few weeks in terms of cancellations. Mark Few talked about his team and COVID after the game. We're doing, doing the best we can, but also using common sense and logic. Uh, the whole, you know, being fully vaccinated and all that. I mean, so we're again just trying to apply some logic and common sense to this thing too. Gonzaga's next game is against LMU on Saturday at four o'clock. Of course, obviously that could change, but uh, right now. That is the next scheduled contest. Well, we'll look forward to that one then. Brenda's running her own endurance marathon. Yeah, I'm not sure she's that actually is it's been home to sleep between covering the, the topsy-turviness <laughs> of Washington State and now the Zags. And then you're flying on a plane. Yeah, tomorrow. When, tomorrow. Leaving tomorrow. That's All right. right. Yeah, it's been it's been a, a late few night the last, uh, you know, Sunday, Monday, and uh, it'll be another late night tonight. But we appreciate we'll get you. It done. Thank you. Thank As you. Always. All right, Washington health officials are concerned about how the weather might impact COVID cases. While Spokane is reporting 178 new COVID cases today, cases broke records in King County yesterday, and today almost 3,000 new COVID cases were reported in King County alone. So while the snow and ice has changed holiday plans for some, for some, Washington's health secretary, it should not change our attitude towards COVID. So while the weather has a lot of people hunkered down, the advice they say remains the same, to get tested before you get together with friends or family, especially for New Year's Eve. If you do not have access to that test right now, you still have access to the tools to keep yourself protected. So take those measures and hopefully you've already gotten vaccinated and boosted if you have not get boosted get vaccinated but also make sure you wear your mask be careful indoors be careful around other people so while hospitalizations across washington have actually flattened out the state hospital association is worried those numbers will rise and it will come at a time when the weather and omicron are causing even more staffing shortages well, there's still a lot of unknown about this new Omicron variant, but health officials released a list of some of the most common symptoms of this variant. The majority of people who've contracted the variant reported fatigue, 
headaches, a runny nose, sneezing, and a sore throat. Because these symptoms mirror the common cold, health officials say if you're feeling sick, the best thing to do is just get tested to know for sure if you have the variant or not. Well, from senators to actors and normal everyday people, mm. more breakthrough cases of COVID are popping up as Omicron becomes the most common variant of COVID-19. Brandon Lewis from our National Verified team looks into claims that Omicron is targeting vaccinated people. Omicron became the U.S.'s top variant less than a month after it was first reported to the World Health Organization. Some of those who are testing positive are people who are already fully vaccinated, leading to questions like these on Twitter, wondering if Omicron is somehow targeting vaccinated people. So let's verify. Can the Omicron variant specifically target a vaccinated person? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the WHO, and Dr. Paul Binash, a virologist with Rockefeller University. All of our experts say viruses are incapable of targeting people. What makes Omicron different than other variants is its ability to evade some antibodies that are produced when a person gets vaccinated. This is really the product of viral evolution. And the, the virus has evolved to ev evade the antibodies that it encounters in individuals and also to transmit from individual to individual more efficiently. The CDC and WHO call this immune evasion. Omicron is also highly transmissible and came about just as people began gathering indoors again, which is partially why it's spreading so quickly. It's sort of a, a, an arms race between virus and antibodies. The antibodies are learning to bind tighter and tighter to, uh, to the original virus and all the viral variants that they encounter. And at the same time, the virus is trying to evolve to avoid being bound by these antibodies. So, no, there's no evidence Omicron is specifically targeting vaccinated people. Public health officials say being vaccinated and boosted provides greater protection against severe illness and hospitalization. It also helps reduce the likelihood of someone spreading COVID-19, but does not eliminate the risk entirely. The CDC says people who are unvaccinated have a higher risk of testing positive and dying from COVID-19. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis.